Hello viewers, welcome to the teaching of Theology of Work. Uh, my name is Lazar Dukun Wasevitereko. I'm uh, the president of uh, uh, Ebenezer University of Minembwe. And uh, I'm also a professor of Theology of Work. I'm very much um, happy to be with you uh, in this uh, video conference where we are going to share together with you about the meaning of work from a biblical and religious uh, perspective. Uh, this is uh, a theology that some people don't very much talk about. Uh, but uh, I'm going to take you through um, very basic understanding of work and the Bible and other religious literatures. So allow me to give you some um, points that we are going to discuss. Um, one of the things that we are going to look at will be uh, introduction and doctrine of work, the definition of work, and in this definition of work we are also going to look at misconception of work. And we look at the way people associate work with slavery and colonization. But we are also going to look at theological interpretation of work from different religious, uh, from uh, different uh, religions and cultures. We're also going to look at biblical interpretation of work within the context of four and caste. The meaning of work in context after the fall. We are also going to look at work with justice in justice and governance. How to redeem the work will be the role of education and innovation. And finally, we are going to look at our work and our calling. Youth and entrepreneurship. So then, uh, welcome to this uh, teaching that we're going to, uh, to have. So when they are talking about work, what do you understand? How do you think about it? Many times we have given different perspectives about work. Sometimes work is like punishment. Work is something that makes people tired. Work is something that makes people to produce more energy. But work for us is something that we need to look at positively, not only negatively. What is the definition of work? Some people, when they are told to work, they associate, especially from a biblical point of view, they associate work with punishment after fall, after sin. And the people forget that work has been there before sin. So if work has been there before sin, what does it mean for us? What definition can we give for work? Um, to me, I can talk from my own culture. What does work mean in my own culture? I will probably take you to these different um, 
definitions. Work for African religions is part of the fulfillment of man's duties to the community and to God. For Buddhism, work is an opportunity to learn and expand one's consciousness. For Hinduism, work is worship. And all of life is sacred. And performing our duties is Dharma. And the Dharma means way of righteousness. So when we are doing our duties, when we are accomplishing our work, when we are doing our work, we are, in other words, worshipping and um, expressing our faith. For Islam, work also means worship. For Judaism and Christianity, work means service and worship to God. So you see that even from different cultures, from different uh, religious um, definitions, work is worship, is a way of expressing our faith. I will also uh, give you some homework. Please go and define work in your own terms. If we go back to um, our doctrine of work from a biblical point of view, we see that the doctrine of creation is described in Old Testament and teaches us about the state of life. We read the accounts of Adam and Eve, where they are recommended to be stewards of God's creation. So the Bible teaches, and other different um, religious books, they tell us about how the world was created. And if I can talk from Christian point of view or biblical point of view, we see that the world was created by God, which means that work is God. Work has been done by God. Work has been introduced by God. Now, if it is introduced by God, it means that all creation being the results of God's work, they are also there to work. And every creation, every creature, every human being is called to work. The Bible teaches us that man has been given a mandate to work the land and protect it. And also, not only the land, but also everything that is in the land, the environment included. Man is the representative of God on earth. At the same time, he is a partner in the mission of taking care of the world with God. And if we look at also, land is not only being looked after, but God commissions the land to produce food for the living creatures, which means that also the land and the whole environment works together for the good of man and all the creation. So the doctrine of work doesn't start with man alone, but also goes back to his creature, um, uh, uh, creator. <clears throat> If we look at creation, 
and we look at the way things work together that is how we can also understand the responsibility that we are given the world needs to be together the world needs to be expressing the mandate of of God who has called us to do work but we have also to understand that when we are giving the definition of work sometimes there is work and explo- exploitation that we have also to understand and that has brought a lot of misconception about work work and punishment i remember when i was growing up we were students uh, uh, and uh, whenever we did mistakes teachers would give us work as punishment this me consider that work is punishment work is bad and uh, we also see that misconception uh, when work is associated with slavery and colonization people being exploited animals being exploited the land being overworked so this type of exploitation is not what work means and by reading and learning about work actually it brings us to think about ourselves and think of our responsibilities that we should, when we are doing work or when we are work, working with other people we should not exploit them because exploitation means we are not aligned with god's call we have also to understand that when we have been given the opportunity to work so the world and us we are all called to be in harmony and this harmony is interpreted or translated in good work so if we are co-workers with god if we are called to protect our environment if we are called to do work as the fulfillment of our existence then we have to do it rightly we should not use work as a punishment but work is a fulfillment of our existence look at how if we uh, think more of uh, this um, work and exploitation we look at the effects of colonization work is introduced by force work is not introduced here by love but when we are doing work as part of our fulfillment we do it with love and any work that we do it by force we do it without care we do it without passion it is not rewarding and anything that we do without reward then doesn't mean that it, it, it has no effects on us it doesn't pay anything but we have to do work with love even when we are working with other people that we are use or our employees for instance we have to do it with love because work is the fulfillment of our desires of course when we are looking at that we see that uh, exploitation has robbed people of their freedom of their dignity and say their sense of uh, satisfaction it robs them of their joy leisure and responsibility it robs them of their will love and respect and moreover it robs them of their rest 
and their humanness. So work and exploitation are totally different. Uh, two things that we can we, we can look at here. Yes, you are working, uh, you are doing some job, I mean a, a, a job, but you are exploiting other people. And whoever is being exploited, he's not enjoying the work at um, its uh, fullness. When we look at the biblical misinterpretation of work, and, and the eschatology, or at the end of times, we also learn a lot. Because if you look at the church, some church te uh, te uh, teaching, especially with some missionaries, when they came and taught people, they made a lot of accent on spiritual matters telling people that, look, don't look at what we have here on earthly matters. Let us concentrate on spiritual matters because the world is not our place. Our place is in heaven. And this is a misinterpretation of the Bible. The Bible doesn't teach us not to take care of the world. The Bible doesn't teach us just to look at what is going to happen at the end times or after uh, this world we are living in. Normally, what the Bible teaches is that we will be rewarded in heaven from what we have done on earth. Under this uh, misinterpretation of work, we find that the church doesn't invest in big scale businesses such as mining companies or enterprises because what we are called to do is just to tell people to go to heaven. But sometimes we fail to teach people on how to live their lives on earth. God has called us to take care of our world. And heaven becomes the reward of what we have done on earth. And even when we are reading the Bible, it shows us that in heaven we will be rewarded on the work that we have done while we were still in this world. So we should very much keep in our minds that work should not be, uh, should not be misconcepted. We should not misinterpret the work. Work has its own definition and this definition should guide us to what um, we need to do. Let us also look at another way of defining uh, work. And this is, um, um, from a sociolo uh, sociological point of view, or the contemporary interpretation of, of work, what we can also call theory of work. In sociology, work means carrying out tasks which involve expenditure of mental and physical efforts to produce goods and services that cater to human needs. The theorists would begin with this uh, historical transition from traditional federal society to the emerging market-based or market-oriented society. And when we are looking at, at that, this theory, uh, theory takes us to Karl Marx, for instance, and many um, uh, of his uh, uh, contemporaries, who examined the power dynamics in workplace and differences, uh, different forms of managerial control of labor in industrial 
a revolution period. That is where, uh, or when he introduced uh, the uh, labor theory of values to explain the difference um, in marketplace. As we have seen in the work definition and exploitation, even here, when we have theories, um, uh, theories that differentiate people and values of work in the workplace, we're already entering the place where people are different. And we create social classes when people are doing their duties. But this theory of work has to help us to, under to understand the importance of each one of us and the importance of each crea uh, cre uh, creature in doing work of God. Because we are all called to work and to satisfy one another. The meaning of work from biblical point of view means that God's people are to be creative and co-workers of God. Work means fulfillment and satisfaction of one's efforts. It gives dignity, reward to the worker. It is a sense of responsibility. It binds humanity and the environment together. Many people will always look at sin as a permanent dislocation of man from God's blessings and promises. That God used work as a means to punish Adam and Eve after they, are, uh, after they sinned. But we have to understand that work was there before sin came in the world, according to the Bible. Work means physical and mental effort directed towards the production and accomplishment of something. So you understand that work, the meaning of work, whether paid or unpaid, it is good for our health and our, uh, our well-being. It contributes to our happiness and helps us to build confidence and self-esteem. It rewards us financially, not only mentally, not only socially, but also financially. So we have to understand that work, the meaning of, of work, even in terms of morality, it is actually, uh, uh, morality has to be the center um, of, um, uh, in the center of our work because the moral standards and social responsibilities have to become an alternative to economic achievement which offer a way to ascend to dignity and make sense um, to our own lives.